been a while since I've done one of these videos. I was trying to kill mouthpiece with three four star operators. Normally, on the first two recruitments, I take Jaya and Pinecone because that can kill pretty much every stage until the fourth floor with no issue. I took Umbreo by accident here, which isn't a big deal if I get a sniper. Umbreo deals with most of the stages here. This is one of the harder stages if we're just running Cambrio, but unless it's the emergency stage it doesn't make too much of a difference in normal mode, and that Brio is enough to kill most of the wolves. Because you don't get wolves with the same defense level spawning too often, Umbreo tends to shoot the weaker one and that prevents any leaks. And of course Jaya murders everything else, because he is Jaya. The way it ended up being a uh, two operator run instead of a, the three operator I was trying to do. Uh, apart from getting Umbreo by accident, which I need over Pinecone to do Phantom's boss fight, there is a small chance that when you clear a normal stage you get an item, and that's exactly what happened here. And since we got such a great item at the start, and we have the right operators for Phantom's fight, I just went, screw it, let's go and do two operator Phantom. Now here I have the choice to go get through the emergency, but I have to take the downtime recreation, which isn't too useful as it will probably give me nothing or waste my money, so I decided to skip the emergency stage. Unfortunately, I didn't hit the duck or anything else uh, that would give me an item, but it's not a big deal for now. We went through the shop, but there wasn't anything worth buying there, so we skipped that. Now, we only need one more recruitment to basically have a maxed out team, so we really don't care about having no normal combat nodes, and we're going to skip as many of them as we can, because they are low value to us. I'm kind of surprised the casters had lower defense than normal soldiers. I kind of remember these casters having slightly higher defense, but maybe it's only the elite ones that have uh, pieces of rock flying around them and whatnot. We took squad leader so we can leak a bunch of stuff every stage, and it's not too much of a problem. We can tell there's no duck on this stage because it has 19 enemies. This stage has ducks and bears on 20 and 22, 19 and 21 means no duck. The last state is he is perfect for Jaya, and to Jaya will always have his skills active the moment he's deployed with the status P. So that's a great item for him. It removes one of his weaknesses. We keep getting a bunch of lives from encounters. Now, what I'm doing here isn't strictly necessary. I decided to spend some ingots, which will make my leg game a bit weaker, to make sure I can get Umbreo. Because there are some boss fights that are dangerous to do without an E2 Umbreo when I'm only running two operators. It's not needed because there's a pretty high chance I would get her anyway, but I have good items so I want to be on the safe side, and they think God isn't that much. This is a very slow stage where you have time to redeploy everything. It's possible to just kill all the enemies and then redeploy for the second wave, even if you're not using any fast redeploys. It's a kind of fun stage to have Pinecone on, because you just deploy her on the top side and she murders everything in two hits. A bit slower, but the need to Umbreo is sufficient as well. Recruits don't matter anymore. We get one of the best nodes possible and pick up a blade dance. The blade dance is the best possible item I can get in this run because I only have two operators. First, there's no bad operator it can land on, so there's never any downside to it. And second, just the pure stat gain from it is bigger than any other item. I switched Jaya to S1 so spiders don't explode in my face. S2 would have been feasible too. But I just don't need the healing in the first place. 
because only Bob actually does damage on this stage and he's going to get spawn killed. Now Jai has to stay down to pick up a bunch of invisible enemies. It's probably fine to move him right now, uh, but I'm not in a rush. There is a gap where you can move him after the invisible enemies end. No need to waste the emergency lives early if I can save them for later. The invisible enemies stop coming after Bob spawns, so we will just move Jai after that. The only threat here is Bob himself and the uh, bomb killing Umbreo, but that's just resolved by redeploying Jai, so we shouldn't have any issues. This would have probably worked without the blade dance as well, at most we would have just leaked Jaya, which isn't a big deal. Not Jaya, uh, we would have leaked Bob. We have 5 lives, because we gain 1 from the upgrades and 4 from the leader squad. So with 5 temporary lives every stage, it's very easy to leak troubles and enemies. This is why I picked it, and it makes a lot of the more troublesome stages very easy to do, in a safe manner, even with just two operators. We get 25% attack for Jaya, another great upgrade. We haven't gotten any useless items so far, so even though we have very few items, all of them are relevant and directly improve our power by a lot. Jaya is the one who has the play dance, so he can simply kill the boss in one second. And that's the stage basically done. The rest is just Jaya AFKing. Only a few enemies on the top side go left, so we could we could just ignore them, they don't matter. Thirty-five percent attack for Umbrio, another item that directly improves our strength. I've had great luck with items this run, not a single bad or irrelevant item. Looking through the path, I want to go to the downtime recreation, hoping to get the Rat Gacha. I chose the Ingots over losing three lives because it's pretty late and I'm avoiding combat stages already, so the value of thirty percent extra Ingots is pretty limited. It will only end up being a few Ingots. Now, for this stage, um, I was afraid of Jaya getting the Blade Dance because we may have to retreat him and run out of DP. So, what we do, we did to make sure Ambrio gets the Blade Dance is we just removed Jaya from the team. The only enemy that we can potentially leak are the Defense Crushers this way, so that makes the stage safer. Whereas if we had Jaya here and he took the Blade Dance, we would have to deploy him, undeploy him because we can't sustain him and Umbreon might die without the Blade Dance while the Jai is undeployed. So this felt so safer overall. Even if we were to leak every defense crusher, that wouldn't take enough lives to actually damage your health because of the 5 temporary lives. Though, as you can see, we won't leak every defense cushion because Ambrio has about 5000 attack when her rest is up. Which made me realize that enemies on this stage have extremely high health, more than I ever thought, considering she takes several hits to kill them. Definitely way more than their normal counterparts. I 
I really think this stage should be in chapter 3 and just this one should be in chapter 4. Their difficulty is really messed up. This stage is far, far easier than the chapter 3 one. It's because it's much slower, so you don't get pressured on DP as much. And there is a lot less range damage, which keeps your operator's health here. Oh, and there's no stupid hostages who AFK on the right side and make you lose lives for no reason. We get the discounts on the shop. Another reason to go top, but, but we were already going there. Okay, so this was one of the nastier stages I could have gotten, but I got very lucky and Ambrio is the one who has the play dance. This lets her kill once in just 3 hits, even off skill, which will allow us to hold the line fairly well. Jaya can survive a hit from a normal oncer, so he can basically take care of one of the lanes himself, the left one that Ambrio can't reach. In the position Ambrio is, she can hit both enemies coming from the top and enemies on the right while her skill is on cooldown. This ensures that we can catch the highest possible number of oncers to avoid using losing as much lives as possible. Though, Umbrio's damage is so high, she can actually kill the monsters before they even leave the right side, even without her skill. She cannot do the same in the middle. Actually, she can. She cannot do it for the elite monsters, but there's only five of them. So even if we were to leak every elite monster, we still wouldn't lose any lives. Power of leader spot. On skill, she kills them in two hits though. They don't have much of a chance. The only reason we're going to leak anything is when the three elites come at once. They also come with normal enemies that overlap with them. And it en ends up being a bit too many enemies to kill without blocking. Namely this dude. But it won't pose any problem. I thought this stage was going to be more annoying when I loaded into it, but the play dance and Umbreo uh, trivialized it fairly hard. We stun this dude to avoid Jaya taking a ton of damage. And the other elite ones are leaks. We don't want to change from the wild gold we already have. Unfortunately, we got a pretty bad event here. Uh, it's not even worth rolling, considering I have an ASPD item. I just throw a bit, see if I get anything. I don't, and then we move on to here. We have two great items here, a sniper attack and attack speed for Jaya. Um, we get both of them for just 18 golds. Even though we lose a bit of attack speed, the upgrades to our individual operators are more than worth that. And this is the first useless item we get in the stage. Um, we don't have any operator that has an offensive or defensive recovery skill, so we can't gain anything. So I decided to head to the shop again, see if there's anything useful there. I also have little incentive to do the emergency stage, because I already have enough items to kill the boss at this point. I'm fairly confident in that. So the most I'm looking for is a few extra lives. And that's exactly what we find. The best possible option where we get lives for a uh, hope. Since hope is a useless resource to me at the moment. Because we can put pick between two normal stages instead of the emergency, we could avoid the more annoying stage. Despite having a sniper, we can't really deal with the drone stage too well because the enemies on it are way too many and the drones are, the th are not the things with the lowest defense so Umbrio will just prioritize pointless things and leak a bunch of drones through it especially if she doesn't get the play dance I wouldn't uh, want to try the drone stage with just this team this stage is much more safe to do because we're only really at risk of leaking stuff on the last wave 
when a ton of enemies come and with the bind casters. Before that, it's just a long wave of trash, so we can just shoot everything. I made a mistake activating Cambrio's skill earlier though, I should have saved it for later, because Jaya has enough time to kill both casters before he has to be redeployed. The reason not the Jaya right next to the box, so the moment the caster catches him, we can redeploy him and then deploy him next to the blue box, so he can catch most of the enemies that way. Umbreo's targeting isn't really ideal for this map, because she targets the slower enemies first. But uh, she still managed to kill most of the enemies. Jai is redeployed to catch the bottom 3 enemies, so we end up clearing the stage and losing 3 lives. Not ideal, but certainly survivable. We want to avoid fights, they don't have anything for me. We get a pretty great fight, we get a fight against the uh, four knights. This is an absolute free win, I can just ignore the fight entirely and still win, because I don't need to kill any of them, they only take one life when they nick each of them, so the leader squad will just cover the fight on its own. We do it anyway, because oh, no might as well, we're here after all. We could have avoided any leaks if we blocked the archer first. But even if we did that, um, we run into a problem that there is not enough time to kill the axe dude at the end, because Umbreo doesn't do that great damage to him, he is very tanky. Considering Umbreo is running close to 6000 attack at the moment, this dude is impressive. Kills giant two hits and just walks right on through. And we get the incredibly useful item of plus two squad limit. More importantly, we get 10 ingots, which is 10 attack speed. We go to the shop, it has absolutely nothing useful, so we leave the shop. We get a free win last stage. Um, we just deploy our operators and shoot, e sh shoot everything here. And then we move on to the boss. Okay, so now what's important here is that Umbreo kills all the casters early. We can't deal with them if they come out and start shooting at us. Because we can gain DP with Jai's model, we don't need to retreat Umbreo. We got pretty lucky with Umbreo being the one that has the model. Um, it's more useful on her than on Jai in this fight. Because Phantom is Crown Slayer, so we can't really pin him down with Jaya without any other melee unit. 
the Sambrio will do the majority of the damage. Luckily we have exactly enough damage to kill the casters in two hits, which helps her clean them up very quickly, even while being distracted by the wolves occasionally. I would have probably been better off licking the, one, the defenders that have a million health, because Jai just takes a bit too long to kill them. At this point, I would have made a better play to retreat Jai and just have him DPS Phantom a bit, even if he doesn't do as much damage as Umbrio, he still does a decent amount. We want most of this damage to go on to Phantom from this Umbrio Westo, which is why we're holding it and waiting for most of the enemies to leak through. Because Phantom has higher defense than almost all of them. I get pretty lucky here and Phantom doesn't dodge on anything just one shot, so he takes a bunch of damage. Jai is deployed after the box, because he can DPS him then, until he gets to the force. Now, we still need to kill a few more enemies, because we don't have enough lives to leak everything that's left. But it's just a few. We deploy Umbreal to shoot Phantom, and we make a pretty big mistake here. We use Jaya to kill one of the ghosts. This isn't ideal. What would have been better, because Umbreal prioritizes them anyway, is to have Jaya DPS down the boss. He would get stunned fairly quickly, but if he helps kill the shadow a bit faster, that should do a decent amount of damage. Because we didn't do that, um, Phantom is going to get dangerously close to the box. Jaya is deployed to try and take him down, and with Umbrio's last shots they just barely do it. <laughs> 